I know what I think, but I am not sure that I am allowed to say it. Or I disagree with what you think, but I will fight to the death for your right to say it. Well, it's there's so many clichés about freedom of speech and openness of thought. But right-wing academics uh, have been forced to hide their views, according to a study that has been produced by a group of people, including academics at Sheffield University uh, and published by the Policy Exchange. It found that of 820 academics, nearly a third of them, 32%, say that their political views are to the right or fairly right, and they've been stopped openly airing opinions in teaching and research compared with just 13% of those in the centre on the left. Also, I think really significantly, the report says that academics on both the right and the left discriminate against each other's applications for grants, promotion and manuscripts submitted for publication. They are all at it. So they're either not saying what they really think or they're using what they do think to punish those who disagree with them. Uh, quite extraordinary, uh, and it is in many of the newspapers, but I'm delighted now to be joined by... Uh, uh, Remy Adekoya, who f is from Sheffield University and is indeed one of the authors of that report for the Policy Exchange. Um, Remy, uh, a very good morning to you. Um, morning. Of all of the places in the world, in a free liberal democracy, universities should be those where, however outrageous or edgy your views are, you can voice them without fear of punishment or retribution people are scared of their own intellectual shadows. <laughs> so to sort of, maybe we'll establish a little bit of a, a baseline scenario here just to you know, set the picture, uh, set the scene for the picture. So generally, most important, uh, or the most important factors at right now is that less than 20% of academics of British universities currently vote for right-leaning parties. So basically roughly 75% uh, vote for left-leaning parties based on results in the 2017 and 2019 elections, okay? So that is one dynamic which we have. So essentially it's um, 20% to 75%. Yeah, but with now, respect, I don't care what... Guys, no, hang on a minute. Hang on a moment. I, yeah. I don't care what they do in the ballot box. It's none of my business and none of yours yeah. in a sense. I am worried about what they are teaching my children in universities and I'm worried about how honest they are with each other. You're saying 80% of them vote for the left, but your research also suggests that the minority on the right are scared of their own intellectual shadows. That is wrong. Definitely. I was just trying to get to the point, Alistair. So what I was trying to say is, OK, so we have this baseline um, scenario, OK? Uh, both sides, unfortunately, as you mentioned yourself, discriminate when it comes to hiring, publication and promotion. Unfortunately, since people with right-leaning views are in the minority, are a very small minority in academia, they tend to get disproportionately affected by this, okay? And so there is, we could talk about a structural discrimination if you are a right-leaning academic. So this sort of affects you more. And then we have that figure when 32% of those who identify as fairly right or right mm. say they have hidden their views or neglected to mention their views for fear of what that might do to their career. And that is completely wrong. And I'm completely against that. Personally, I myself, I'm a left-leaning uh, academic, but I think it's completely wrong that anybody around me should have to sort of worry about what they say. Any sure. decent person, you know, but we're I'm, talking about fairly right, you should have to worry about what they say. Absolutely. But, but to take that example I'm, that I'm, you yourself cite there, absolutely intriguing, if I was the vice, you're at Sheffield University, so I'm the vice chancellor of University X, and you, yeah. the great, the great Dr. Remy Atticola, apply for a job. If I discriminate against you on the basis of your colour, I would be banged to rights. If I discriminate against you on the basis of you being an old lefty or another candidate because he or she's an old right winger, I'm going to get away with it because it's what you're all up to. And it's completely wrong. And that's why we're calling for, and that's why we're recommending for the position of an academic director who'd sit on the board of the office um, uh, of the office for students to act as an ombudsman, to have ombudsman powers, and to be able, so people could actually appeal to somebody. Mm. Because when we have situations, high profile situations, like, you know, Jordan Peterson, for instance, you know, getting disinvited to Cambridge University, big ac academics like that are going to survive. You know, the, he has a huge fan base. He's not really going to have problems. But the people who will have problems and who will self-censor 
are early career academics, young academics who are still insecure, who don't have tenure, who are still struggling trying to make a career, and they are the ones who are very likely to self-censor if they are on the right, and this is completely bad, and we think this is completely wrong, and nobody should have to self-censor either on the right or on the left, you know. There should be, there, there could be certain, um, uh, certain, um, uh, fields or certain types of speech which the law could decide you know are illegal and should not be done fine but within the law everybody should have yeah. that academic freedom and that's what this whole thing is about it's not Did about you... right or left it's not about goodies or baddies it's about you know everybody being able to pursue research and, yeah. and teach as best they can but but in reality it is goodies and baddies in the way in, in the way real life is working as, as as you've discovered with your colleagues in this piece of research i mean is it your sense then that a bright young man or woman in their mid to late 20s who's applying for their first teaching job at a university or, or perhaps considering going for their first promotion, you know, from, from, from reader up to lecturer or even for professor, if they are pro-Brexit and if they are prepared to articulate that view, they better bite their bottom lip or they're not going to get on in 80% of the British universities that we, the taxpayer, pay for. That's the reality that you're describing. I, I wouldn't go that far, Alistair, and saying 80% of the universities. I'd say well, definitely... You said 80% of in... academics. I, 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 no, no, no. I said 75% of academics vote are left-leaning voters. I didn't say 75% of academics discriminate against right-leaning voters, OK? From that 75% of academics who are left-leaning voters, roughly half are ready to discriminate mm. against uh, right-leaning voters, okay? Yeah. So if you are quote-unquote lucky and you come across an open-minded um, uh, left-leaning academic, there's every possibility you will get that job even if you are a Brexit voter, yeah. okay? But there is the danger, an unacceptable danger, we are arguing, that a right-leaning uh, uh, applicant or a leave voter might come across a left-leaning academic who decides to, you know, who disqualifies them on that basis. OK, so it's not all leftist, um, left, um, leftist, left leaning academics discriminating. OK, we shouldn't throw everybody into one bag. OK, it is a group, but it is happening. And because that group is disproportionately larger than the right leaning group, obviously the effects, the detrimental effects are felt by the right leaning group. And they are at this point in time in greater danger of being discriminated against. Sure. So, yes, it would be risky coming out with your pro Brexit views, let's say. If you are a young academic, you know, who hasn't, doesn't have, you know, a strong sort of prominent um, uh, name already, it would be risky, most probably, yes, in too many places, and that's wrong. But if you were, if you were a pro-Brexit uh, academic, young one again, who thought that in the case of Cecil Rhodes, Rhodesia and now Zimbabwe, uh, that bad, bad person, though he may have been in all those, those years ago, um, but, you know, history moves on. We learn the lessons of history, etc. And so many very clever young men and women, many of them of colour, have benefited from the Rhodes Scholarships. Uh, you apply for a job at a university that's very happy to go along with what the majority want and tear the statue down. I mean, it's another example of what really worries folk about what is going on in our universities. Not just jobs, not just peer review of papers, uh, but just the whole way universities are run. So that's another issue which you brought up, Alistair. So that's the issue of, you know, student behaviour, yeah? Our report actually focused well, no, but, on... No, but in academics. the case of Oriel College Oxford, the students nudged it, but the top academics, the managers, the bosses of the college and the university said, yeah, the statue goes. So that was the way that went. Uh, what this report um, recommends, um, uh, calling for this um, uh, director of academic freedom, that would be somebody issues like that would be able to be appealed to. The report also does uh, call for student unions to be included in having the duty to maintain academic freedom, okay? Mm. So it extends the scope, essentially, of academic freedom and tries to implement, you know, already because in, in British law, there is already the right to academic freedom, but it's not really being implemented as strongly as it could be. Sure. So what this report is trying to do is to essentially put steps in place. There's 20 recommendations. Obviously, I'm not going to go into all of them here to try and actually implement that and make that a reality, okay? So nobody either on the right or on the left is able to be discriminated against politically without having at least a right to appeal to this director of academic freedom we talk about who would have ombudsman powers, sure. who could step in and say, okay, what's going on here? Is academic freedom being infringed here? 
okay, what do we do about it? And that office that you're talking about is a relatively new invention. There was a fundamental row about it when Toby Young was nominated as the first director of it. And that was a, that was a freedom of speech issue as well as much as anything. But, but it is in effect in the gift of the Secretary of State for Education uh, and his uh, Minister for Universities to read your report and do this. But, but to end on that clear point... You agree with me that it's fundamentally wrong that anyone is being discriminated in progressing through the teaching profession at a university level because they because of their political views. That is wrong, wrong, wrong. 200 percent. You're not a mathematician, are you, when you say two? <laughs> <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed the conversation and um, and I'm glad I was quite provocative and I'm, I'm glad you were equally provocative in your responses. Uh, Remy Adekoya from the Sheffield University, one of the authors of that policy exchange document.